good afternoon my beautiful people um today we'll be looking into something else we'll be looking into how the Igbos have always related with the minority ethnic groups that are found around the Igbo communities like the minority ethnic groups you find in the south south of today how we related um we're doing this video because sometimes we talk about um we say oh let us work with the minority guys they are our brothers they are this they are that but i must let you know that even if you want to work on unity working on unity is not bad but you must work on a unity that is realistic don't build unity on a fast don't build unity on lies when you say the Igbo people and the minorities were always doing well doing things together in the past i will let you know that that is a lie i will let you know that that is a lie a very very big lie and whenever you want to build unity and you build unity on lies it will not last it is better you build unity on the, on being realistic you have to be realistic with each other both sides have to be realistic and say okay this is the truth this is the truth this is how we can move forward together but if you come out and tell yourself that the evil people and the minorities were relating properly before the colonial masters you are lying you are lying the records are there and we can pull them out at any time you are lying and we are not going to take that anymore if that was what was said in the past it will not be said today because we are moving forward and not backward that is a lie there was cooperation but there was no there's no friendly feeling there's no love it was just people working together to survive especially as per commerce business this side brought this this side brought this we exchange goods we take money and go back home so if for you to think that okay we were brothers sitting together eating it is a big lie it never happened in history it never happened now the part of history we will be talking about today is something that happened during the colonial government just before the colonial government handed over to nigerians as you no know, independence in 1960. in 1957 the british people looked at their lucrative enterprise called nigeria and they said look we don't want this business to fail we don't want nigeria to fail let us go into nigeria and try to find out the relationship between the major tribes and the minorities let us try to cement this relationship let us try to repair it where possible so that these people will not destroy themselves when we hand over to them because the british could already see that nigeria was pressing for independence and so in 1957 they set up what is called the henry willings commission the henry willings commission were the ones who went into nigerian communities asked questions to know if the Igbo people were marginalizing the minorities they did the same in the Yoruba and the north um regions too focusing on the Igbo side now when they go to the eastern region many ethnic groups that were against the Igbo people were the Efik and the Bibio the people you call your brothers in quote the Efik and the Bibio were strongly against the Igbo people's government now the 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 british people checked the allegations they made against the Igbo people and i must tell you if the allegations are 10 eight were lies the remaining two was from misunderstanding that's what you call misunderstanding when two people or two sides do not understand themselves properly it wasn't deliberate the Igbo people were not deliberately marginalizing them one of the accusations they made which is very petty is that the Igbo people were buying up land in calabar and some other places in their territory and they they don't buy from the Igbo people's place the british people said well the Igbo people have money and they are trying to expand they are just trying to expand and so uh you will have issues like this of Igbo of Igbo people buying land outside their main territory and that one should um should not be stopped because that is how development spreads that is on the fx side there were many allegations but there's no need to go through all of them because they were petty and silly and most of them were f were found out to be false the fvp were not just happy that the majority of the eastern leadership were Igbo people not that the Igbo people were marginalizing them they were not happy about the numbers of Igbo people in the government in ncnc they broke out from one smaller party later but all that is by the way we are just looking at some facts very quickly so that the video will not be too lengthy now uh the second group of people who are we are strongly against the Igbo people in the eastern region government 
were the job people. As usual, the British went among the job people. They asked them, okay, what are the issues the Igbo people, uh, what are the problems or what are the things the Igbo people are doing against you? They cited underdevelopment in their place. They cited Igbo people not giving them enough slots in the educational board, scholarships and all that. Now, talking about the scholarship first, the British people found out that those were lies because those ones who were qualified to go for scholarship and all, they were giving them their scholarships. We know a, a particular man that was given a scholarship from the Ijo area and at the end, he turned against the same uh, Igbo people that gave him scholarship and started killing them during the Civil War. We know about that. We will talk about that in another video. Now, um, the second accusation being that their place was underdeveloped, the British people checked the records and saw that the Igbo people are not marginalizing these people, but the Igbo people did not hold their native authority. They didn't hold them as responsible for their underdevelopment. Instead, they pointed hands at the Igbo government, leaving their province leaders, their province administrators and all that. Now, at the end of the day, the British people found out that, look, the parts of the Ijo areas that were underdeveloped were not underdeveloped because the Igbo people were not giving them money. They were underdeveloped because those some parts of the areas that are swampy, some part of the areas that are creeks, some part of the areas that are unnavigable, even by motor vehicles or, or whatever, those places are harder to develop. And so they will always be falling behind in development. Those places are hard to develop. And it is not the fault of the Igbo people. It is inside the Willings report. I'm not the one who said it. It is right there. The British wrote it that it is no fault of the Eastern Region government that those areas are like that. The Eastern Region government is not God that created your land to be swampy and hard to develop. And back then, Nigeria was not as rich as it is today. Nigeria did not have crude oil back then. What the Eastern Region government was running on was just palm oil exports and some other things that we were doing to make money and you know amongst ourselves and back then the eastern region government was doing very very well it was well developed you know so money was getting to everybody there was no marginalization as the minorities claimed but the british people also said okay because of the differences these people have this is what we can do they gave recommendations this is what you can do this is what you can do they just give several recommendations which we can't look into now because of the length of you know time time is going but the recommendations are there. But I want to just hit on the fact that the Igbo people were not marginalizing them. Whenever you see them talking about that on the internet, just ignore them because they are liars. And so that one is by the way. Now, looking into some other things, because I said I will come back to something else. There were some suggestions that both the FX and the the FX Bibio and the Ijo people gave the white colonial masters there were some suggestions they gave them do you know the suggestion they said put up a policy in government that will stop Igbo people from buying land in our place that was one suggestion of the minorities put up a policy that will stop Igbo people from buying land in our place we don't want them buying land in our place we know that under the constitution they are free to buy land anywhere but we don't want them in our space stop them from buying land do you know what the British people responded to them? They said, to put up such policy will stall development of the Eastern region and of your communities in particular. That was the warning the British government gave the minorities. If you put up a policy that stops Igbo people or anybody from buying land in your place, you will stall development. You will stop development in your place. It will stop the it will make you backward. Don't put up such policy. We as the British people, we are not going to put it up because we knowing more than you, we know that this will stop your development. Don't try it. And the minorities were complaining. They said, okay, since you don't want to do it, no problem. That was in 1957, stroke 1958. Now let me bring something to your awareness. Nigeria got independence in 1960, about two years later. In 1966, the programs brought out, violence brought out, 1967, civil war, 1970, the civil war ended. Let me tell you what happened as soon as the civil war ended. I'm telling you, you'll be surprised. As soon as the civil war ended, um, the new river state that was under the government of the Ijo people, it was under a military governor that is an Ijo man from somewhere in Bayelsa today. 
I think DHSP was his name. I'm not sure now. Now, that man, immediately he grabbed power. Do you know what he did? That policy, the British people want them not to bring up. That was the policy he brought up immediately in the New River State. He said, don't sell land to the Igbo people of the East Central State. Don't sell land to them. That policy, I'm telling you, has survived it today in parts of River State. I am telling you the truth. You go to places like Okrika, there are still policies like that. Till today, don't sell land to people of the Southeast. You go to places like Ogba, they say don't sell land to people of the, what do you call it, of the Southeast. That policy was what the British warned them not to bring up, that it will cause underdevelopment and backwardness. Now look at River State today. People do not actually know that River State is an underdeveloped state. People do not actually know that River State, educationally, is a less developed state. People do not know this. When you, when you talk about e ELDs, educationally less developed state, River State is part of the list. It is part of that list with some northern states. This is backwardness. This is what such policy brings about. Don't take my word for it. Check it yourself on the internet whether River State is on the educationally less developed state or not. Check it yourself and see. And you will be shocked by what you see there. You will be shocked by the fellow states you would see with River State on that list. People do not know that River State is actually underdeveloped business-wise and development. That is when you talk about developmental indices, it's actually underdeveloped. You think that the, the development you see in Port Harcourt is what is in across River State. You don't know that the rest of the, 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 the state is extremely backward and extremely underdeveloped. This is because of anti-developmental policies, anti-developmental stance they took since after the war. You talk about places like Gemoha, the Gemma and all those places. They are very, very backward. I'm not, I'm not shy to say it because I know it's the truth. If people want videos, we'll show you their communities and how they live there. What are you telling me? Poverty is working on two legs in those places. They don't have industries. They don't have industries. They don't have commercial, you know, they don't have that commerce, that acumen to do business. They are extremely backward. You go to places like um, the other time there were some there were some people from the Calabari ethnicity, they are a whether a king and some of the royal fathers, the chiefs, they came out to do a peaceful protest, begging the federal government. To come and revamp some of the industries in their community that their people don't have work to do that they should come and help them revamp the industries in their place now let me bring something to your notice again during the war during the civil war in calabari for instance those who were not Igbo and those who were Igbo, there are both Igbos and non Igbos in calabari those who were not Igbo attacked the Igbo people they said you are part of this our uh, Igbo people that are our problem they some of the Igbo people, Igbo Calabari people, them, they chased some of the chiefs away. Now, those industries in Calabari back then was set up. There's a palm oil, um, I think it's a palm oil plant. I can't remember rem remember exactly. Set up by the Eastern Region government in their place. During the war, they chased away all those people. And those were the people that were qualified to run those industries. Most of them were from the East Central State. Some of them were Igbo people from Calabari. They them. It didn't matter. There is backwardness. There is poverty in those areas. I am highlighting to you how the Igbo people have lived with the minorities. Stop making this claim of, oh, we are brothers, oh, we are brothers. It did not happen. They did not like the Igbo people. They did not. And they did not hide it. I don't really blame them if they don't like the Igbo people. Everybody cannot like you. I don't blame them. It's just like that. Everybody cannot like you. So some of our people should, should stop this idea of, oh, these people are our brother. You can make peace with them. You can build unity with them. But don't say back then we were together. It's not true. We were never together at any point in history. We were never together with the Ijob people, for instance. The Ijob people lived a secluded life. They don't mix up with other tribes right from time. They don't mix up with other tribes. They are not interested. It's just their own way of doing it. They are not interested in mixing up with you. They don't recognize you. They don't like you. Their idea is, stay in your place. Let me stay in my own place. That is the way they look at the whole thing. You talk about the Benin people too. The Benin people, when, when they met the Portuguese and got arms from them, do you know what the Benin people did first? 
they used those arms they used those guns you know what they did they immediately went into Igbo territories closer to them and started dominating them with guns before they had those guns it was hard for them to dominate the Igbo people the people you call Anioma it was hard for them to dominate them but as soon as they got guns from the Portuguese the first thing they did they used those guns to become colonial masters over the Anioma people back then it is this domination that they did that is still causing some identity crisis there today. Some Anyoma people will tell you we are we are Benin people or something. We are Edo people. It is back then. It is from back then till today. You can see how people think towards the Igbo people. As soon as they had guns, the Benin kingdom, what did they do? Immediately subjugated the Igbo people around them and enforced what you call is there no gear or what or what is that name on these people forcing them to bow to the above of Benin. And they used that thing to spread far. They went very, very far in their own time. But as with every other kingdom or empire, it will fall eventually and it has fallen. And now they are just one state called Edo State today. What connected all these tribes was business. Because this side will bring his own side, this side will bring his own side, we exchange, we take money and go home. That was what connected all these tribes, the Igbo people and the rest. Nothing else. The people who were selling salt will sell salt. The people who have yam will bring yam because it was mostly trade by butter. The people who have fish will bring fish. The people who are locksmiths or blacksmiths will bring iron products or whatever. And they sell in the market. That was what connected all these groups. So don't build unity on a false premise. Don't build unity on something that never existed. Build unity on understanding. Don't say we were brothers before because they were never brothers at all. And the rest of the tribes like that. So let us correct ourselves. It's not about to build unity, but build a unity that is actually genuine, not a unity that is false. Go and read Blink's minority report. You will see all the accusations they laid on the Igbo people. And then you will understand how these people we are looking at the Igbo people. So we'll just leave it at that for today. Thank you.